Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, hopefully you can see us well from where you are. Hopefully you can hear us from where you are today. Uh, just so glad that you are joining us on uh, this online live worship gathering. Cody's with me this morning. Good morning, Cody. How are you, brother? So glad that Cody's here with us today. As you can tell, we are uh, we have scaled down today. We are being very mindful of the situation that's going on around our world and our community today. And we just felt like we needed to, to uh, reflect that tone uh, here in our worship gathering this morning. I say worship gathering. It's, it's two of us here on the platform and maybe three guys upstairs and a couple guys outside. And that's it. On the whole entire campus today, there might be 10 people at the most. That's it. Shout out to our buddy Jason Roberts who still showed up today and did a little cooking for us this morning. Can't make it without him. So glad he did that and served the body this morning by doing that, at least this part here. Uh, And I just want you guys to kind of see, you know, what we're talking to this morning, you know. And we're just so used to coming here and we're used to having a full room and seeing you face to face and person to person. And, you know, I'm kind of a touchy feely kind of guy myself. And so the whole, the six foot rule, you know, is, is kind of challenging for those of us who like to shake hands and give hugs and give pats. I mean, Steve Smith, it's like, he doesn't know what to do with his hands because he can't pat somebody. So it's just been a, a great challenge, but I'm just so thankful that to honor Hebrews 10:25 about coming together. I'm so thankful that we can do it this way. And I'm just reminded there in that, in that verse of Scripture that talks about not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, that Hebrews 10, 24 precedes that, which says, let us stimulate or encourage one another to love and good deeds. And that's the heart of that. That's why we come together. It's to encourage, it's to build up. It is to one another, one another. So we can do that even now. I trust that you have taken time to uh, get on Facebook. And if you're watching, you're on. And and go to our page even now. Uh, You can still like it and you can still share it. But I want you to go on there and I want you to look for people. And I want you to have just a second here of a virtual meet and greet. To say hello, how are you doing? Glad that you're here. I'm going to try to do that myself and see if I can do that here. Also, we have prayer counselors who are sitting by today. If you need somebody to pray for you, there's going to be a number that's available, uh, 270-527-7615. If you call that number, a prayer counselor will answer that number. If uh, they need to, if it's, a, it's a, if it's a man and you're talking to a lady, they'll get you to another man uh, who can pray for you. Uh, if it's a lady who answers and you're a lady, she'll talk with you, pray for you. This is for youth. This is for kids. Anyone's welcome to call 527-7615 and just say, hey, listen, would you pray for me? We have over about 12 prayer counselors standing by today just waiting to pray for people and to encourage people. And so we're so glad uh, that we can do that. And I'm seeing us even now as I'm talking I see folks coming in and uh, chiming in even now. So please do that. I'm going to give a shout out right now. I think I am. There it goes. There we go. So um, we're going to pray. Then we got some special things that we're going to share today in our worship. So you're free, as we always say, you're free. You're free to stand up in your living room. Uh, Even if the people might look at you funny this morning, sing as loud as you can. Pray as loud as you can. (laughs) Raise your hands. Now's the time, uh, parents, families, bring your kids together on the couch. This is Couch Church, if you want to call it Couch Church. That's what we're doing today. And let's just enter into a time of worship together. And, and, and please remember, you're not just watching, but unless we worship, then we haven't really 
accomplish what we want to accomplish, and that is to exalt a risen, living Savior over everything that's happening. So why don't you just pray with me right now, uh, with your family, with us, if you're on this platform, pray with us even now, and let's lift up this time to the Lord. Let's worship Him and praise Him, lift Him up above all of these things. Father God, uh, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I'm tired. It's been stressful. It's been a challenging week from a ministry and a life standpoint. Father, we just want to be so very real with people right now. We want to sympathize with the hurt, with the confusion and the chaos. And Father, we want to be an instrument of light and an instrument of hope right now. So, Father, we are going to praise you. We are going to exalt you. We're going to lift you up. And we're going to see you reigning over everything. Father, you reign over this virus that is impacting our world. You reign over, Father. Those who have sick, are sick, Lord, and those who have lost their lives. Father, you're God over death. And you promise victory through death. Father, for us as believers, if, if the worst thing happened to us and we died on this earth, the greatest thing would happen and we'd be delivered in your presence. And so, Father, we pray that we can share that hope today. We pray you over our jobs, our work, our finances. Father, we pray you over the mom and dads who became educators or co-educators alongside teachers in our school systems this week, Lord. And Father, we thank you for those who have labored and served to teach children to be available, to bring meals, to feed kids. Father, we thank you for those in the community and around the world who are still one anothering one another by bringing children into their homes who don't have a home, showing hope, showing love, showing grace. So, Father, we give you this time of worship and we just lift you up and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing with us this morning. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Oh, let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. Watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. When all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise, let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. 
Let all creation cry, God, we praise you. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. Watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. Let all creation cry, God, we praise you. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. You know, we just want to take a second right here to let you know kind of what's been on our hearts as we came here to uh, worship this morning, as we came to this place. You know, as I look around the room right now, <laughs> I'm just so used to seeing you, uh, so many of you, and in your life is such an encouragement to us. And, you know, God's just been showing me this week that we take so many things for granted to be able to come together to worship to to freely come to this place to encourage one another to love each other uh, to hug each other uh, we, we take so much for granted and so what we're going to do right now is we just want to share a, a worship moment with you uh, so that we can think back to to what we've been blessed with and what we're looking forward to to one day being able to all come back together. I asked Cody just to share a worship moment that was really special to him. And he's going to do that. And he's going to explain uh, why that's special to him. He's going to introduce a song. And we're going to get a chance to, to worship together from an event uh, a few months ago. Good morning, everyone. And thank you again for, for joining us this morning. We're so grateful that you've chosen to, to gather with us digitally. As Alan was saying, we, uh, we've introduced several new songs lately, but one in particular that has been incredible, and we've seen some interesting movements on God in our congregation, is Raise a Hallelujah. And we introduced this song um, late last fall in 2019, but little did we know uh, that that was the beginning of a, a really tough season for a, a lot of different members of our worship team. And that song has been a reminder that worship is a weapon for us. And even in, in these times, these very interesting and trying times that we're in now, I think it's important for us to remember there's a reason that we're called to worship in spirit and also that we have the sword of the spirit as a weapon in our arsenal as believers. Amen. So don't take for granted this morning that what you're singing is your weapon in this fight. So we'll, we'll show a clip now and worship with us. We're going to worship here and uh, sing Raise a Hallelujah with us in your homes this morning. Hallelujah. With everything. 
Continue to sing with us this morning in your homes. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing together. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. The darkest night. You are close like no other. Thank you, Lord. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running out. my life laid down, surrendered down, I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time, all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. And I'm going to sing of the goodness of God.
this were a normal Sunday, this is the time that we'd be inviting our ushers to come forward and we'd be receiving our morning offering. But as you know, because you're watching us from home, you know this is not a normal Sunday. So we want to invite you. I think the guys are going to put on the screen. You know, our hearts here at First Missionary are really hurting today for folks who we know are struggling, folks that we know maybe are having to close down their businesses. My wife even had to close her business down, so I know. So our hearts are to help those folks who maybe will need us. So guys, if you can put it on the screen now, we'll give you three opportunities. Of course, last week we put up that you can still give online. Of course, you can still do that. Also, we have set up a box in our front lobby. And um, so the door will be open during the week. You can come in and, and put your offering in that. But as you see on the screen this morning, uh, if you will click the arrow by another fund. There you go, guys. Here's three opportunities. Of course, we have to keep the general fund going here at the church. So you can, you can choose to give to that. We also are, have been in a square up ministry here. We've been in our building for just a little over a year now, a year and a few months. So you can do that. But, but maybe most importantly, the bottom one, a deacon benevolent opportunity. And this is what we do here at the church anyway. We, we do this to support folks in our body who may need that support. And even more so now than ever, I think. In the overabundance that God gives you, you're able to give to that general fund, but you can choose to give to that benevolent fund. And I promise you that money will go in and folks in our body who need help. That's our heart, folks. That's, that's what's on our hearts. That's what we want to do. So God, if he's blessed you, bless somebody else. If he's given you more than you need, let's reach out to those who are in need. More now 
maybe than ever before. I just ask you to do that. Keep that on your hearts. Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now as we lift these things up. Father, Lord, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, most of all, Lord, that you are in total, total control. Lord, I pray for our folks in the body. I pray for our folks in the community this morning who are hurting, who are struggling, who have all kinds of questions. And maybe we don't have all the answers. But, Lord, we know that you do. So, Father, I just pray, even as I had an opportunity yesterday, I pulled up to the service station just to fill my wife's car with gas. And a guy rolled his window down there. I didn't even know. And he said, hey, buddy. He said, what do you think about what's going on? And it gave me an opportunity to, to, to tell him that our God is in control. And I told him that. And he just kind of looked at me. But I think he got it. And if, you know, God's going to give us opportunities. I have, I have preached this all of my life. That no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, it could be at Walmart, it could be at the grocery store, it could be at the gas station, it could be at work, it could be wherever. God gives us opportunities to share the gospel with folks. And maybe, it's been on my heart, that maybe right now, he's given us a little extra special opportunity because folks are hurting folks are struggling folks are wanting answers so i pray this is just for me personally that god would give me those opportunities to share with folks at the gas station share with folks wherever i am the gospel of jesus christ the most important decision that a person can ever make in their life to accept him as their personal savior so father that's my prayer today and as folks are watching at home, I pray today, if you don't have that assurance of that salvation, as Brother Allen shared earlier this morning, we have folks that are sitting by the phones. Please, please give them a call. Please make that decision. That's the most important decision we can ever make in our life. So, Father, just continue to go with us this morning. Be with Brother Allen as he comes in just a moment and brings the message to us, Lord, you've laid upon his heart. And be with our folks. Thank you for the folks that have, are here this morning. Uh, being able to put this online and share with our folks in the community and our folks in the body. We love you, Lord. We love you so much. And we praise you. And we give you honor and glory. For it's your name we pray. Amen. Because there's no prison wall you can't break through. No. You can't move all things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save. All things are possible in the darkest night. You can light it up, you can light it up. Hope arise, death is overcome. You've already won, God of revival. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will come. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. In the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up. God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won.
amen and amen. Even from where you are at home, people may think you're weird if they're outside your room, but let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning just because He is so good. He is worthy of all of our praise and all of our adoration. And what a great, what a great message uh, when you, you raise a hallelujah that uh, your weapon is a melody, a, a melody and that through worship you you see Christ in his rightful place exalted above all things but also when you worship and you praise the Lord it lifts your spirit up and reminds you it reminds you of who you are in Christ it reminds you of where you are in Christ and it reminds you that you can approach all of life from a platform of victory and never a footstool of defeat. So thank you, Cody, for leading us in worship this morning. Thank you, praise team, for what you did months ago and leading us in worship. And can't wait, can't wait till we can all be back together again and worshiping as a church family. Also mindful today, just very thankful for folks all around the world today who are uh, watching even right now to uh, this time that we have together to uh, worship the Lord and in song and now to worship the Lord through his word uh, we're blessed to have the written word uh, that reminds us of the living word who is Jesus and he's the object of our worship he's the object of our praise well today we are going to wrap up I really think I really believe today we're going to wrap up a message series that we entitled one another what we've learned in this message series is that there's really something behind all of those one another statements in the New Testament. There's over 50 one another statements in the New Testament to serve one another, to encourage one another, to build up one another, to put up with or forbear with one another, to love one another, to forgive one another. And what we're seeing behind all of those is that when we give love away or we look for the happiness of someone else and try to do what we do to help somebody else to be happy, God has a way of bringing that back to us like a boomerang effect. The key to happiness is not searching for it like a place or a destination. But the key to happiness is giving it away. That reflects the heart of God. If you're a child of God, that reflects your true identity in Christ and your true heart. So even now, I pray and I trust that we are one anothering one another by doing what we're doing as a ministry and as families. Of all the things, though, that we could do today to show love, to one another one of the greatest things that we can do James tells us it's a great theme in the book of James it's a big theme in all of scripture James tells us God tells us to pray for one another that's what we're going to be talking about today we're going to wrap up uh, this particular message on praying for one another this will be the third part of this message. You can watch or catch the other two parts by going to our Facebook page where you are now, even our YouTube channel, and you can see that there. And you can see those other messages leading up to today. So let's pray. Let's ask God's anointing over this time of teaching and preaching. And we're just going to trust His Spirit to be with us right here and to be there with you as you're watching from home. Uh, Father God, as we turn our hearts and our minds to the word today, we would not want to do this without your presence, without your power. Lord, we would not want to do this without your rest. To be able to trust you to do that which only you can do. So Father, we just, we just yield ourselves to you right now. We trust your spirit to be our teacher and our guide to speak through us today, Father, 
and through any means that you want to speak through to speak to people, to encourage them, and to give them hope. So Father, teach us even now how to one another, one another, as we pray for one another. We trust you with this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, in James chapter 5, James tells us and encourages his listeners to confess your sins to one another. And then he says to pray for one another. And we'll trust the guys to work on that uh, pad music to go on off in just a second here. Um, I think uh, Cody was engaging in you folks, and usually that kind of slides to the way there. There we go. They got it. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. You might not have heard that, but I heard it. And those of you who know me, well, sometimes the littlest thing can just kind of... But anyway, we won't go there. Well, James tells us, he says, confess your sins to one another. And then he tells us to pray for one another so that you may be healed, that you may be restored. And then he says something that's really, really neat. He says the effective, and the word here for effective is laser-focused, energized prayer. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Then he gives Elijah as an example of that, a man who was just like us, and when he prayed, based on God's word, when he prayed, the heavens shut off the rain. He prayed no rain, the heavens shut off the rain. Then when Elijah prayed again at the word of God, guess what happened? The heavens opened up and the rains came. He is the example that James gives to us. And, and an example of that could be all of us. As we pray for one another and pray for one another and pray for so many in this world at this point and this time. Then what we did last week is we looked at the example of Jesus. And it seems like whatever James was saying to do and encouraging believers to do there in James chapter 5. It seems like we have a picture of this in the life of Jesus. We flipped over to Mark chapter 2. And in Mark chapter 2, uh, there is this e event that happens in the life of Jesus in his ministry. And it has to do with a man who was a paralytic. He was paralyzed. And we can imagine his life and what his life was like and how he probably uh, had a pallet that he laid on on the city streets and on the roads and and how people would come by and he probably had a life of, of begging and, and just depending upon so many people. Well, one day, Jesus is in the home of some people uh, and he's teaching the word, he's sharing the word. And the scripture tells us in Mark writes in Mark chapter 2 that the paralytic had four friends, four friends who came to bring this man to Jesus. Obviously, the man wanted to be healed. So the four friends bring this man to the house where Jesus is. And when they get there, the house is so crowded and, and people are at the door that they could not get in. But they were determined, the effective, energized, laser-focused effort of people in prayer can accomplish great things. Those guys, they took this man who was on a pallet. They went up onto the roof of the house. The scripture tells us, and Mark writes, that they then began to remove the roof. And they dug into the roof. And we can imagine the ancient world, the type of roof that it was. And they'd have to dig into it. And then once they made an opening into that roof, they took the man. The man who was paralyzed on a pallet. And they lowered him, literally lowered him down into the room where Jesus was. Wow. I mean, you're talking about being determined and being focused. Not letting other things distract or get in the way, but energized, laser-beamed, 
focused intentionality in bringing their friend to the one who could heal them. Seems like a picture of prayer to me. So when they lower the man into the room, and you can imagine the scene, if you had been there and the, the roof opening up and this guy coming through, if you can imagine the scene, then Jesus, once the man comes to the floor, Jesus says to the man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. And then they begin to, to talk about that, and they knew that only God could proclaim forgiveness. Jesus understood what many of the religious rulers who were there watching, what was going on in their hearts and in their minds. And so Jesus then says, well, what's easier, what's easier to do here? To say your, son, your sins are forgiven or to say to the man, uh, you know, take up your bed or take up your pallet and walk. And then Jesus to show that he was who he said he is. Jesus told the man to get up take his pallet, and walk. And the man did that. And the scripture tells us that all the people who were standing around, they began to glorify God, and they were see, saying things like, you know what? We've never, we've never seen anything like this before. So a dire situation, it was paralyzed, a paralyzed man, hurting, hopeless, struggling, somebody, willful, faithful, Prayers, prayers, bring him to the one who can bring healing. We see that happening here. Jesus said that he saw their faith. He saw their faith when he pronounced forgiveness. He saw their faith. The, the faith of the people who brought the man. He saw their faith. But we also know that Effective prayer just doesn't take faithful or willing prayers. It also takes willing and faithful prayer objects. The man had to be willing. He had to be open. Maybe that's why some people, when they pray, and they pray for situations that involve other people, they don't see God answering their prayer because the prayer object is not open. It's like the man who's praying for his wife or the wife who's praying for her husband or, or the mom or the dad who's praying for their son or their daughter. God, touch their heart. God, bring them home. God, change them. We see that it takes a willing heart to be open to God, to let the Spirit move, to work. This man, this paralytic, he was a willing and a faithful prayer object but then the third thing that you see here in this text is a willing and faithful savior and here's what jesus did jesus touched the man spiritually he addressed his deepest need his deepest need was not that he could not walk because what good would it do for a man to walk on this earth but never to be able to walk into heaven what good would it do for this man to be healed physically and not to be spiritually healed? To have no hope beyond his current pain and suffering. Jesus touches this man spiritually first, showing that he is God and he could pronounce forgiveness of sins anytime that he wants to. And it will always be, it will always be on the basis of the cross of Christ whether it's before the cross or after the cross, all forgiveness of sins happens and takes place because of what Jesus did for us when He died for us on a cross and was raised to have victory over sin, death, and the grave. Then He touched the situation physically, not just spiritually, but also physically. And Jesus can do that. He's the one who can heal. He's the one who can repair. By telling the man to get up and walk, Jesus not only touched him spiritually, but he touched him physically. And Jesus can do that. In this situation, it took a willing and a faithful Savior. But here's what you know, and here's what I know. Not every prayer that we pray 
is answered the way that we want it to be answered. Not every situation of sickness that we pray for finds healing. At least not healing in the way that we might pray for it. It leads us to a great dilemma about prayer. And how prayer really works. And what's happening when we pray. It challenges us to think about reality. And what life is like. And how things operate. And how things run. There's actually two views of reality that are two extreme views that don't seem to be biblical views, but they're views that people tend to have. We would all embrace and we would all say that prayer changes things. And, and that's a hope that we have that if we pray for one another, it's going to make a difference. But some people, they see God and they see the world from a viewpoint that's called determinism. It's the idea that every single thing that happens, happens because God said, this is the way it is. This is the way it is. This is the way that it's going to go. Every single thing that happens, every deed of man, every word, every thing that happens on this earth, people will say things like, well, it's just going to be the way it's going to be. It'll work out the way it's supposed to work out. Things happen for a reason. But here's the question. Whose reason? If determinism is true and, and God has already laid it all out and has determined everything that's going to happen, then based on good reasoning, prayer really changes nothing situationally but then there's this other view of reality that i don't think is also is not also is not a, a picture of the biblical view of reality it's called indeterminism complete indeterminism and complete indeterminism basically means that whatever happens happens because it happens because People just choose things to happen. Indeterminism means that God has not determined anything to happen. That it's all open. That God has basically wound up the planet. And he created it and wound it up. And he stepped back from it and said, okay, here it goes. And that God is just idly sitting back and watching things unfold. But yet God can still... Step into time and space. Complete indeterminism is the idea that when we pray and we ask God to step into time and space, that He hasn't determined that He can then that He can then step in and He can then move. If, if that's the case, then prayer could essentially change everything. One view, prayer essentially changes nothing. The other view, prayer could change everything but here's the biblical view the scripture seems to give to us and that is that, that that god certainly has a will god's will is what he determines what he determines will happen but when we look at scripture it seems that god's will happens either on what he unconditionally wills or what he conditionally wills. Now, for example, there are things that, that God has set in place. And he has set in stone. And God has said, this is going to happen. And there is, there is no movement that could change that. When God said that he would determine to create the heavens and the earth. And to create all things. That was God's unconditional will. When God said, I will give a redeemer to mankind. And he's going to defeat the evil one. There is no act of hell or humanity that could stop that. That's God's 
unconditional will. When he, when he set the time that Christ would come and that Christ would die on the cross, that Christ would be buried and Christ would be raised, there's nothing that could change that. Even Jesus, even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, not once, not twice, but three times, three times he prayed, God, if there be another way, let this cup pass for me. And every single time, God said no, because Christ was praying against the unconditional will of God. There was nothing not even Jesus could say or do to change that. And one day, Christ is going to return. And He is going to deliver us. And deliver those who trust in Him from the pains of this earth and the pains of this world. If the worst thing happened to us on this earth, then the best thing would happen to us as believers. There's nothing that we can do, nothing that we could pray, that could stop what God has said is going to happen. And I just want you to imagine with me just for a second, just for a second, just imagine Christ after He was risen from the dead walking around on this earth do you think do you think do you think do you think his mind ever went back to Gethsemane do you think his mind ever went back to that day that he prayed God let this cup pass from me if there be any other way God of course he resigned not my will but your will be done do you think Jesus after the resurrection in his humanity ever said you think he ever said Whoa, I get it. I get it. I was praying victory apart from death. But God, you willed victory through death. And there also in Scripture is God's unconditional will. That is that God has said, I will do things. I want to do things. But they are conditioned. They are conditioned. His unconditional will is what he says is going to happen. And you can't pray and you can't change it. And I'm so thankful because he's a wise, kind, loving God. But when it comes to his conditional will, he says there are things that I will do. But I'm going to condition them upon human cooperation. And so many times, the means of bringing the will of God from heaven to earth is prayer. It is praying. Like when Jesus said about certain healings and things, He said, these things will not happen apart from prayer and fasting. Or like when Scripture tells us, that God does not desire for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. That depends upon people saying yes to God and people being open to God. That's His conditional will. And I don't know in regards to where we live, where those two are separated. And I'm glad I don't. Here's what I know. Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. Scripture tells us in Isaiah that God's thoughts are not your thoughts and His ways are not my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, declares the Lord. And the Lord says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So I don't know with every situation or circumstance what is God willing to do? But Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. And so I conclude that I am to pray. And I am to pray. We are to pray for one another. We're to trust God with our prayers. We pray, we pray, we pray like heck. And then we step away from that. And we trust God. But we're always praying. We're either praying or we're praising. 
but we're always talking to God. And if prayer is anything, prayer is a relationship with God. It's not an event. It's not a dear Heavenly Father and an amen. And something sandwiched in between. And many times you don't get to the end of it because you fall asleep. Or something else catches your attention. But it's an ongoing conversation with God. It's a relationship. But could it be that there are many things that God is saying, I would will to do. But it's going to take my people praying. Like healing the land. Or healing somebody. There's a story of a little small town that was experiencing a terrible drought and famine. The town came together and they figured out how they could take care of themselves physically, but, but man, their land was dry. And the people came together and they said, let us pray for rain. Every day, the townspeople would come to the square and they would pray, God, give us rain. God, give us rain. God, give us rain. No rain came. Days upon days, weeks upon weeks, months upon months. God, God, give us rain. No rain. Then one day this little boy came to the town square. And he said, oh dear Lord, I know you can cause it to rain. God, let it rain. The sky began to darken. Clouds began to roll in. Droplets of rain began to pour upon the town people's heads. The next thing you know, the sky opens up. And it's a shower of rain. You say, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? The little boy, unlike anybody else, he brought an umbrella. He prayed with faith. And he trusted God. What can we do for one another? We can pray. What can we do for our land? We can pray. What can we do for our leadership? We can pray. What can we do for our churches? We can pray. 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 And then we step back and we trust God. My dear friends, in the middle there, somewhere between the unconditional and conditional will of God, we find rest. We find rest. Prayer is pulling heaven down and trusting the will of God. So I want to invite you to Bow your heads with me right now. Cody's going to lead us in a time of response. And then Cody is going to pray us out this morning. God bless you for joining us online today. Again, if you need somebody to pray for you, please call that number. Our prayer counselors are ready to minister to you.